Hello and welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly fix of all things badminton. Coming up, head coach Park Ju Bong shares his experience on how COVID-19 affected his plans for Team Japan. Plus, BWF umpires from lesser-known badminton nations talk to us about how the sport is growing in their backyard. And we have a bit of fun with China's Zhang Xiwei and Huang Yachong. For badminton, the COVID-19 pandemic has had far-reaching consequences. From players adapting to training at home to organizing committees hosting tournaments in bubbles. Similarly, Team Japan head coach Park Ju Bong had to transition very quickly into a system that helped his players and coaches stay on track for when the season fully resumed. Yeah, it's... Uh... Yes, it's a corona pandemic, so it's everything to stop. So especially is uh, after all England to until August, yeah, totally is uh, our national team is all the stop. So our players only just a little bit their training on club, but it's our national team is uh, really is uh, cannot do anything. Yes, of course. It's uh, uh, we are. Uh, it's a few months. We are never together training. Their training is on training, like on club. So our national coaches is uh, no chance to see, and then no chance to together training. So, but of course we are communication, but we are really so on, together on court. We we couldn't do the training, so I little bit so worry about that. But of course, yeah, they are every day. Every week, some training met uh, everything. So we are report and the check. We are uh, start the training the, from last September to our national training camp, and then we are participating in Danish Open. Of course, it's, uh, we are small number, but this my experience is uh, you know it's after all in England is first time tournament in Denmark. Of course, we are. It's be worry about is uh, the pandemic, but also is uh, for us is uh, my players is uh, how much is the performance is they keep and after all England, and then also very long time never play to international national tournaments. So how's the tournament feeling is I worry about that time. So yes, everything is uh, very carefully. And also in the Danish Badminton Association, they do the the protocol to the all the players. For our team, also it's the first experience. So end of the tournament, my feel oh like this kind of situation. Then maybe the we can start it the tournament. So after the mock open, I'm very happy too. Start is the international tournament. Yeah, it's my players also very happy to play on court, and then of course result also two titles. So I think it's a, uh, you know, it's a uh, first is uh, I'm very happy to my players play on court international tournament, and the day is a uh, is a uh, experience the tournament feeling. So that is good for uh, our team. So yeah, it's uh, it's very happy to Denmark Open. Team Japan, however, had to wait an extra five months to participate in another tournament. The inconsistencies of the season due to COVID-19 made it very difficult for Coach Park to keep his team focused. But like everything else, there were positives and negatives to learn from and build on. Yeah, it's a good experience. It's a, you know, it's a lot of time. I prepare to the, you know, it's a program. So some new idea, new program. It's what is the best program for our team, our each players. That time is more think about out of the court training programs, future programs, and then also good is a discussion to the the Japan Gate to. The, our national team is the future. How to, what is the best programs? So every is uh, you know is uh, 
from physical trainer to MIT, and then nutrition to MIT, all different parts to the, the boss to meeting is a very good timing to that time. But it's a, of course, it's a bad experience. It's a, you know, we cannot continue with the training. And then it's a, you know, it's a, a, lot, a lot of time to at home. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, yeah, that's good and bad. Of course, it's some players with a very good recovering time. Some players is a, of course a refresh to the it's a mental. That is also is a good for them. But of course it's a bad time, bad one is of course if they want to play, but it's no chance. Yeah, they always they're happy to on the court. But it's a, all the international tournament is a cancer. So that is a, for me and also my players, there's a bad experience. Yeah, it's a diff difficult. It's because it's a Japan also our national training center in Tokyo. But in the Tokyo also is a lockdown. So many players is not outside of Tokyo also, they stay. So they worry about national training center to in Tokyo and then together central training. They are very scared. But it's anyway, is uh, we are Finally, it's, uh, everything is more national training center. It's a protocol is very strongly controlled, so they agree. So we are training at least. We are continued. We are national training camp, and then this tournament we are participating. Being in the middle of a pandemic has been, without a doubt, one of the toughest periods for people across the globe. But Coach Park can now see light at the end of the tunnel and hopes it is the same for everyone. I think hopefully now is, uh, you know, is a start to the vaccine. The, now is, a, we can, what's that, is an injection now start ready. So hopefully now is a much better than in the last time to in the pandemic is slowly, is going to down. Then I think is a, we, I hopefully it's a come back to normal. And then also, hopefully, it's a come back to all the badminton international tournament. So it's a look like I think it's a more is a in the bright for the the in the world. Yes. I enjoy the the, the badminton family in general. Because in badminton, unlike any other sports, there is no, there's no like racism. Uh, it's something that I really enjoy about badminton. We love each other. Whenever you pass, people love you. So it's so nice. It's undeniable. Badminton's appeal is truly global. At the Asian leg in Bangkok, we got up close with the umpires from Botswana and Iran to find out how the sport of racket and shuttlecock is shaping up in their countries. You can find in the, each car two racket and one bottle of the shuttle. More than 80% play badminton and like the badminton, but not for professional in the court and in the <laughs> hall and the for the championship and it. Uh, we are not a big uh, country badminton uh, involved with the badminton. So yeah, it is very interesting for us to come out to see more matches, uh, huge tournaments, especially ladies are uh, working hard on that to get a chance for coming outside because it's really, really interesting. Badminton in Botswana is not that old, it's uh, new. I think it started in 1992, if I remember well, but it is developing well, it is growing. We have uh, programs like shuttle time, so we are now developing it from primary schools. In the past, it used to be played by only older people, but we have started it in primary schools now. It is growing almost the whole country now. There are a lot of people who want to play the sports. Most of the time, they volunteer to play the sports without anything. Iranian badminton players, I think, when the junior and the until uh, 15, they are very, very good. 
we have, uh, I think, a fourth level in Asia, under 15 and under 13 years. After that, no support of them and must be support and keep them and improve them and push up them, go to the high level and uh, I think this is important for badminton of Iran. For getting higher, they need uh, the, to put more budget because if the player are not uh, confident that they would be safe and alive, they should go for the another work. So if you can uh, relieve the players for money, for, uh, for the lifestyle, and uh, get a, a better coach. Yeah, finance is the biggest challenge. They have wishes to take the players to training centers in China or anywhere in the world. Problem is the finance. Edmonton is not a big spot in Botswana. Like you know, uh, most of the African countries, football is, uh, is, is always number one. The facilities are lacking and the funds but slowly it is developing a lot. My wish is to see uh, one or two players maybe in the international stage one day. Uh, that is my wish, I think. Uh, with developing players from primary schools, uh, we'll get there. Uh, one day you'll see uh, Mutwana here in the Super 1000 tournament. My wish is that to see, for example, in the final stage, they said that, Hermin, you cannot go through this match because your player involved in this match. It is my wish. It's time for a quick breather, but stay with us for some epic action on the courts of Birmingham, featuring the one and only Zhang Xiwei and Huang Yachor. And speaking of mixed doubles pairings, we catch up with India's Satwik Saraj Rankiredi and Ashwini Ponapa. Initially when I started, I was very scared. It's been more than a year since the popular and bubbly Zhang Xiwei and Huang Yachong competed internationally. For those who missed the world number ones, we've chosen their semi-final match at the Yonex All England Open 2019 just for you. This encounter against Indonesia's Pravi Jordan and Melati Daeva Octavianti was a typical performance that demonstrated the Chinese's domination these past few years. taken by Okta Vianti. Service over. Yeah, she is playing well. They're both playing exceptionally well. Opening game, 21-13. Oh, the lucky net cord. Oh, that is 
is a terrific smash. Terrific pace, terrific defence, fast attack. Yeah, well played. Brilliant. What a magnificent disguise drop shot. And it brings up three match point 17. opportunities. Match point 17. Oh, two errors from Octavianti. The lucky net caught this time for Wang Yashiong, having saved three match 24. points. Now, the world champions have a game point. Oh, the drive serve. And it is indeed one game all. Good flick. Yeah, his form is definitely getting better and better. Good rally. Oh, that's nice. Brilliant. Oh, super. There, once again, the change of pace from the big hitting Travine Jordan. block great defense yeah well done Cheng Shu Wei and this defensive shot whipped across court changed everything Point opportunities. This time, third time of asking, having saved three match points in the second game, the world champions come through 21 13 in the deciding game. It's been tough for us, tough year for us, 2020, so we didn't play pretty good. We played only two tournaments in the starting. So then I had injured, then I didn't play full long year. So yeah, it's very challenging for me personally, so it's mentally and physically. So pretty happy we started really well in the 2021, so hopefully it will continue like this. After a commendable display at the Asian leg, Satwik Sairaj Ranki Reddy and Ashwini Ponapa are proving to be a formidable mixed doubles tandem that India can count on. Babington Unlimited grabbed the chance to sit down with the duo to find out how their partnership was first drafted into action. Our partnership began in 2017 Sudhiman Cup. So that was the first tournament together and played pretty good. We beat Indonesian pair. Uh, Tanto and Gloria, so and we did three games with everyone, with Chinese and Denmark. So it was a good time and then later on we continued playing. Initially when we started it was because of uh, our former coach Tan, coach Tan Kim Ho. 
So he was the one who got us to start playing together. So it just happened. It wasn't like it was planned with anything big in mind. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like the fact that we could rotate. And I'm not like a conventional mixed doubles player. So I'm not someone who rushes to the net a lot. And playing with Safik was uh, easy because he would move in. And plus he's got a gigantic smash. So it made things a lot easier. I didn't have to worry about, oh, I have to go back and look after the back half of the court like I did in the past. I'm not uh, comfortable in talking with her on court. Initially when I started, I'm very scared. Like, what she will think oh, if I say I'm very junior to her. <laughs> uh, so then later on in game, like coach said, it's when you're a game, you have to speak it out. It's not about senior, junior. So then later on, like we gel really good on court. Then yeah, that communication issue was there initially. Then later on, the trust came. So from then we played really good. It was something that just kind of worked out, I would say. And it was nice that it clicked, but it, but then I feel after that tournament, our game style kind of changed because we were trying to be made to play like conventional mixed. And playing conventional mixed, I was getting a bit confused. So it's nice that from then to now, we've gone back and we found a way which is both conventional as well as not conventional. We found like a balance that works for us. I got COVID, I was in one room for 25 days. So I uh, put on almost eight kgs. Then I, I came back and I reduced again. So I was doing one and a half month, only training no on court. So then I had only one and a half month practice before Thailand Open. So it was like mentally very challenging for me. I don't want to keep any expectations on the first tournament of playing for one year. So, so I wanted to give my 100%. doesn't matter win or lose. That was the main thing going on my mind. I want to enjoy my training, which I did a past one year. So I want to see whether I'm in that layer or not. There it is, another squeal of delight for Ashwini Ponapa and a gracious uh, celebration from Ranky Reddy as well. They got there in the end. I was happy with the first match that we played because uh, I was like, wow, we are playing really well. That means we are there. I mean, despite the fact that we haven't trained together, we've beaten a good pair, we have a good chance. So that was very motivating and very, uh, it was a confidence booster. By the end of the first tournament, I was raring to go for the second tournament. Cause it's like, at the end of the day, having a tournament under these circumstances is incredible. So for me, I was like, okay, one tournament's done. We have another tournament, another chance. So let's go and try and get it better this time. I feel like in this tournament, we've been the most consistent we've ever been compared to like in the past. So in that sense, it is it has been a win for us because consistency levels have been way better. But uh, at the crucial moment when it was really needed, I think that's an area where more than the game, it's also like our mind needs to be calmer. We need to be like and not let little things get to us because it can get to you, especially at that moment when it's really crucial. Oh, that's a super shot from Tay Ratanakai. No, oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's it's funny when you're playing a match, little things can just slip away, and especially when you are like after something and you get distracted by a mistake or two. That that's all it takes for the game to turn around. If maybe if we won first game, second game, we could have played more 100% than first game we played. So, so yeah, uh, when we get chance, we have to pull it off. Then we don't get chances like this every time. So I was thinking about that. So, but yeah, rather than that, we are happy that we played like good level of quality of tournament. So, yeah. Just definitely go and win a tournament because we haven't won a tournament together. We haven't played as many tournaments and also we haven't played smaller tournaments. So even if it's a big tournament, small tournament, whatever tournament we're playing, definitely going out to like try and win it. Because I do believe that we are capable of doing that as long as we both have our heads on our shoulders and enjoy the whole journey. So that would be definitely something to like strive for. 
We've reached the end of today's show, but join us next week for a highly anticipated special on Japan's Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirota. My pace not a problem. She's having to think about it. Meanwhile, do visit BWF's official website, bwfbadminton.com, for the latest in the sport. It's goodbye for now. Take care, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>